Welcome to Health Matters. We have had discussions on cancer before, differentiating facts from fiction. Today we try to clear the confusion surrounding cancer treatment. To walk us through that world is Dr. Jean-Louis Menezes. Dr. Menezes is a cancer surgeon and is an advisory committee member for CanSurvive, which is a campaign of Caritas in the fight against cancer. He is also a member of St. Luke's Medical Guild. Doctor, thank you for making the time for this interview today. My pleasure. Why is there even a reason to speak for this? So I'm here today on behalf of Can Survive, and uh, as a part of this Can Survive activities, we have been conducting uh, health education talks across the state. Okay. At the end of each talk, we have a question answer session where the public can ask a question uh, to the doctor who's giving the talk. And as we have given these talks, we've realized that a lot of the questions seem to indicate that there is a, a lot of fear in the mind of the public, as well as there is a lot of confusion and there is a lot of misinformation that is available. And hence it was decided that we should have a session to clear out what is uh, the treatments that are available for cancer. Okay. What are the reasons for that fear and panic that you encounter? So, Cancer is a disease that is dreaded because uh, there is a possibility that it can recur. That means it can come back okay. even after okay. you have taken the treatment. And some of the patients may then succumb to that illness mm. and there may be a period of suffering associated mm. with that. And that is what creates the fear in the mind of the people. Okay. So it is important to remember that uh, this campaign can survive is giving out a message that it, there is a lot of hope and there is a lot of chance to, to beat this disease, to survive this disease. And that is one of the core messages of this campaign. So we have to get the message out that it is possible to survive and that you can survive. And that the treatments themselves are not as bad as what one fears that they might be. Okay. So what are some of the treatments available for cancer? So the, the basic treatments that are available for cancer are surgery, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. These okay. are the basic treatments. One or more of these treatments may be used for each patient. Okay. Of late, there have been a lot of advances in each of these fields. So there's advances in surgery, there are some advances in chemotherapy, there are some advances in radiotherapy. These advances are very often publicized because, oh, there's a new treatment, etc. But most of these new advances may not be applicable to all the patients. Okay. So uh, whatever is uh, applicable to each particular patient will be then decided and offered to that patient. But the basic treatments would remain these. Okay. What is radical surgery for cancer? So radical surgery doesn't mean that it is some daring gung-ho operation. What it simply means, it is a medical term, radical surgery is a medical term and that means that it is possible to remove the entire tumor and therefore you have a possibility of curing the patient. That is what is the meaning of radical surgery. Okay. Now in the past, this often meant a mutilating surgery and uh, that created some fear of in the minds of the people. people. But as technology and techniques have evolved both in surgery as well as in anesthesia. Hmm. It is possible to do more and more complex operations hmm. and patients do well and come out of these operations well. Okay. So there is another focus. So the first part is the patient has to survive the operation and then okay. survive the cancer. But as our technology has improved, now there is a lot of emphasis that is being given on maintaining normal function and preserving organs. Okay. So let me give you an example. Say previously, historically, whenever a lady had a breast cancer, she would be advised a complete breast removal or a mastectomy. Nowadays, it is possible to safely remove only the affected part of the breast, removing the tumor, and with the remaining treatments, you achieve the same result as you would have if you had a whole breast removal. Another example I can give you is for patients who have had, uh, who have a rectal cancer or a bowel cancer. Mm. Previously, almost all these patients would have a colostomy or okay. that means a stool bag on mm. the tummy. Mm. 
through which tools would come out. But as our technology has advanced, we are now able to remove that tumor and then join the, the stool passage back down so that the patient doesn't have a permanent colostomy. That means they will pass motions normally from below. Okay. So what we are achieving with this treatment of these advances in surgery is that we are able to take out the tumor okay. completely and we are now able to try and maintain a normal function for a lot of the patients. Okay. Is there a thumb rule around the, the order in which surgery, radiation, chemotherapy would be applicable or is it? No. This, uh, like I had said earlier, each patient may not get all three treatments. Okay. Some patient may get only one, some patient mm -hmm. two, some patient three. So that varies from whichever type of cancer that we are dealing with. Okay. The order of the treatments also, mm -hmm. whether you have a surgery first or you have chemotherapy first, or radiation first also varies with the type of the cancer. So there is no one size fits all rule that you have to have this first. So chemotherapy therefore would not be compulsory for cancer patients depending on... So chemotherapy, uh, is the, the term chemotherapy again is a term that means that we are giving some medicines that act to destroy cancer cells. Right. The same medicine will not work on all cancer cells. Understood. So, some chemotherapy will be given for some cancers. Mm. Some cancers may not need chemotherapy. Okay. Even within each type of cancer, the chemotherapy may vary according to the stage of the patient. Okay. So, it is not compulsory that all patients get chemotherapy. And even if those who do get chemotherapy, all of them don't get the same type of chemotherapy. Okay. Okay. Are there side effects to chemotherapy and is it painful? So this is another common thing that comes up is that uh, people would say chemotherapy is painful but in general chemotherapy itself is not painful. Okay. There are some side effects to chemotherapy. Those side effects vary depending on what the medicine that is used and in what dose and etc it is given. But uh, the common side effects that we see are uh, some amount of nausea and vomiting. Mm. And that is common, but it passes, it improves rapidly within a few days of taking the chemotherapy. Okay. So that uh, once the, each dose is given, the patient's nausea and vomiting improves rapidly after a few days. Another common thing that is seen is hair loss. Mm. Okay. So hair loss is seen in some chemotherapies. In some chemotherapy, there is absolutely no hair loss. So again, it varies with what the type of drug is being given and if you have uh, uh, hair loss even within a few months after finishing the chemotherapy mm. the hair grows back so it's not okay. that the patient is going to be permanently bald okay what is the difference between uh, radiation and chemotherapy okay so uh, chemotherapy like I have already told you is the administration of a medicine yeah now whether it is an injection or a tablet it is a medicine that will then act all over the body and it will target cancer cells all over the body. Okay. Radiation on the other hand is the use of specialized x-rays. Okay. So radiation is given to a particular organ. So whether it is the, the oral cavity or the breast or the cervix, it gives radiation, it gives x-rays only to that part of the body where the tumor is. Okay. And is there any pain associated with radiation? So radiotherapy does have some side effects. Uh, most of the side effects are local. That means they are restricted to the part where you have given the radiation. Okay. The common side effects that we do see with the radiation is some amount of skin burning or blackening, some amount of uh, irritation of the mucous membranes which may cause burning while say eating okay. and some amount of stiffness of the muscles of that part. Okay. And uh, most of these side effects of the radiation, they improve within a month or two of finishing the radiation. Okay. So as time passes by, the side effects uh, diminish and then gradually the patient achieves a near normal function. Okay. So the radiation side effects are, are restricted to the area where the patient has received the radiotherapy. Okay. So for example, if a patient has a tongue cancer hmm. and has received radiation here, so they would have radiation side effects in the mouth and on the front of the face and in the neck. 
Okay. But they would not have side effects in the rest of the body. And so also if a patient has received uh, radiation for cervical cancer of the mm. uterine of the uterus, then they would have radiation side effects to the lower abdomen and not anywhere else. And those side effects would pass off after one or two months of finishing the radiation. Okay. Do chemotherapy and radiation kill good cells as a byproduct of the process? Okay. So it's like this. Each human being, every one of us, is made up of trillions of cells. Yes. Okay. Each of these cells has a different lifespan. Hmm. Some have a lifespan of several months, some cells have a lifespan of days, and some have a lifespan of few hours. What this means is that every day, each of us has billions of our cells dying. dying. And yet, we continue to lead a normal life. Hmm. Even though we are healthy, billions of our cells are dying every day, hmm. and we lead a normal life. Hmm. Now, chemotherapy and radiation are designed to kill cancer cells, hmm. but there is some amount of damage to normal cells. Okay. That means non-cancerous cells. And the damage to the non-cancerous cells is what we see are the side effects of these treatments. Okay. So the damage to the normal cells that occur results in the side effects that we see in these patients. So yes, there is some damage to normal cells, hmm. but those do recover. And okay. so the majority of patients will recover from those side effects and then they will continue to lead a fairly normal life. Okay. What kind of care does a patient need to take when undergoing either and chemotherapy and radiation? So uh, the most important thing in uh, any of these treatments is that the nutrition of the patient has to be maintained. If we are able to maintain an adequate nutrition during the course of the treatment, then the majority of patients would not have as bad side effects as they would, say, if they are not eating as well. Okay. And you need to have a local home-cooked, healthy, wholesome food. And you have to find a way to make sure that the patient eats enough to, to withstand that treatment. Some patients, depending on the type of treatment that is going on, they may not be able to eat, say, normal solid food like, say, rice or a chapati. In those cases, we may offer them a liquid diet uh, to try and make sure that they get enough of energy inside and enough of vitamins and, uh, and proteins so that they are able to maintain their bodies and withstand this course of treatment. There are many other aspects that, uh, uh, that need to be looked at for each treatment. But the remaining things would vary depending on what is the treatment and how, uh, and how they are uh, uh, being treated. So for certain types of radiation, we would have certain other precautions that are given. For certain types of chemotherapy, there would be certain other things. Or for certain surgeries as well. Hmm. But uh, those would be specific. But the universal one would be nutrition. Okay. Doctor, do you feel that it is important for people to know about these facts? Yes. So, uh, one of the uh, core uh, ingredients of this Can Survive campaign is to educate people that they can survive from the okay. cancer. And understanding what this treatment is, is very important. So, there are a lot of misconceptions that are circulating in the public. Uh, many of these uh, so-called facts, mm. many of them are false. You get it on social media, so that whether it's WhatsApp, Facebook, Internet, Google. So people read this or they get it on their phones and they tend to believe that this is the thing. Okay. So uh, that causes a fear. So like you asked me the question, does chemotherapy and radiation kill good cells? Yes. So this is something that keeps doing the rounds. So people have to understand that this is the treatment. Mm. These are the side effects hmm. and this is how you're going to get out of it. Hmm. If you understand this, then you wouldn't be scared about it. Hmm. And this is what our campaign is looking to do, that we want to take the fear out of it. And why is it important to take the fear out of it? So because of the fear that is surrounding this, many patients don't want to take treatment. They are scared of the treatment, so they don't treat the disease or they may 
they may try some treatment that they have read about on on uh, on their online or on social media and that process may take time and during that time the tumor has increased so we i, I keep seeing patients like this that uh, they saw that they have uh, cancer sometimes they've even got the biopsies and all done mm. or sometimes they've just suspected that they've got the cancer and they have just tried these alternative treatments mm. and they have lost time and then they come to you once the cancer has become more advanced so there is it's a shameful loss of loss of life and loss of time and all this could be avoided if they had to know at the outset that mm. this is the problem this is your treatment and you will get through this if you if you go through it correctly so if they had to know it at the outset those people would have come in early and taken their treatment early mm. and their lives would have been saved and their lives would have been a lot easier if they had to do that treatment early that is the reason why it is important for this message to go out so i would request everybody who is watching this program whenever you get these messages on your mobile or on your computer whether it is related to cancer or any other illness don't forward it to the to your friends yes. don't forward it to your groups because you are propagating a message many of these messages are false completely false and then you will have some people who will believe that message and then not take treatment which could maybe save their lives so if you do come across such a message if you think that it is relevant or valid i would suggest that you go and meet your doctor and you ask him about this message that is this right and is it okay you know to to do this and then only maybe you could consider forwarding it because otherwise we are just it is a chain of misinformation yes. that is going around yes. and that chain needs to be broken and we have to break it otherwise we will keep on having the situation where you will have young people or people who can be cured of a problem and they they try all these other alternate treatments and you have uh, a, a, a shameful uh, loss of life and you you lose time in that process mm -hmm. so this is something that we have been trying to work on as a part of this campaign okay and these are things like you know sasop can help with this and durian can help with that and those are all the messages Many of that these typical things. yes these are various things alkaline diet and uh, alkaline water and you know all these mm. type of things mm. are keeping on making the rounds yeah. and they are not a substitute for the proven scientific treatments right. these treatments that we offer surgery chemotherapy radiation they are taken by thousands and and lakhs of people mm. across the world mm. and most of those patients are coming out of their illness and they're going ahead to lead normal lives mm. so there is nothing that you need to be so afraid of mm. this treatment that you you abandon all scientific thought process and and start following uh, social media uh, mm. treatments mm. is there a space for alternative therapies like say homeopathy or ayurveda to be taken or adopted concurrent with allopathy uh so this is a difficult question one of the problems is that whatever treatments that we offer the surgery the chemotherapy the radiotherapy these are treatments that we offer based on scientific proof mm. so we have a proof that if you give this medicine this is the result that you're going to get these are the side effects that you're going mm. to get and this is a chance that we will beat this disease mm. while there is no such scientific study that has been done for the other so called alternative treatments mm. so if you were to ask that doctor what are my chances of being cured or what are my side effects going to be how valid are going to be those answers that you would get so while uh, we are honest with you while most allopathic doctors are honest that okay this is your treatment these are your expected complications mm -hmm. and this is how you're going to come out of it so we are upfront with you that doesn't mean mm -hmm. that another treatment is equally honest about it so okay. Uh, we do see patients uh, with side effects mm. now the problem is if i'm 
doing a particular treatment for a patient. So if you are doing a surgery and if the patient is also taking some other medications on the quiet, mm. which I am not aware of, mm. if there is a problem subsequently, then mm. I would not know what is the cause of the problem. Right. Okay. So it, it would be better not to mix um, alternative treatments with scientific treatment. So uh, I would suggest, I would recommend that while you are on treatment, you, you don't try the alternative treatments along with it. Okay. Maybe if you, if, you, if you choose to, maybe you can try it after you have finished your treatment. Mm. Because we don't want a situation where we know that there is a possibility of having side effects with our treatment. Mm. And we don't want to have another uh, uh, set of uh, medicines Something coming in and, and then uh, mixing up the whole situation. Okay. Doctor, do you have a message for our audience? Yes. So, for as part of this uh, campaign, we want to have you to have an honest answer. So, the simplest thing is, when you go to your doctor, you ask him straightforward questions. What is the disease? So, you should have a clear understanding of what is the type of cancer that you have. Hmm. You also need to have a clear understanding of what is the treatment that is being given. And then you can ask the doctor what are the likely side effects or complications of this treatment and how can these things be minimized. If you have this discussion, then you will not be as scared to take that treatment. You will also be more prepared if and when you do have a problem that okay I have this problem I know that I'm going to have uh, this is an expected uh, problem right. and I need to have do XYZ things and deal with it yeah so it is important to have that understanding when you have that understanding then you won't be scared to take the treatment hmm. and no doubt there may be some problems that you may have but you will likely get out of this treatment uh, and and then you may continue to have a normal life after that Thank you, Doctor, for the insight that you have shared and the clarity that I think you have brought about. And to all of you, our viewers, thank you for watching. I hope it's been an episode that helps bring clarity and therefore confidence in how to approach the battle on hand. For fighting cancer and beating cancer is indeed a battle and one that we all strive to win at all costs. Stay informed and stay healthy.